So in this problem, we're going to map the upper half plane, upper half z plane, to this region here in the w plane, which is obtained from the limit as epsilon tends to zero of this shape. So again, it's an open polygon um, with four corners, one, two, three, one, two, three, and four at infinity. Um, and we just get these two lines closer and closer until we get this. So it actually means that we've actually got um, x, uh, w1, and w1 is, and w3 are the same points. So basically, if, if you can think, we've got w1 here, w2, and w3, and w4 is at infinity, then now this is going to be both w1 and w3. We need both. Because basically the polygon goes here, up here, down here, to the same point, and then to infinity. So W1 and W3 are both here. This is going to be W2. Now, um, this is a nice symmetrical situation. So the most obvious choice would be to have X1 here. Um, so as we go from infinity to X1, um, we're basically doing this. The side we want is on the left. Um, then x2 is going to be here, the origin. So I should say minus 1. And x3, just by symmetry, is going to be 1. Okay, so we've got the f of minus 1 gets mapped to 0. f of 0 will get mapped to ia. And f of 1 gets mapped back to zero again. So, um, transformation starts off like this, as usual. So we need to work out what our angles are. So, um, when we go around here, then this is just um, the external angle is 90 degrees. So we've got um, big Z minus, minus 1, so that's plus 1, um, so minus a half. Now, at this point, what's happening, um, we are, this is, um, a clockwise angle going around a whole um, well if we're going in a straight line it would be zero what, what's happening is that uh, our, our external angle is going to be rather than uh, a negative angle it's going to be plus pi um, so uh, we end up with, rather than we end up with a, a z, z minus zero, uh, to the plus one of the change. Okay. Um, and then the last bit, um, going down here and then here, this is just the usual um, pipe right angle here. So that's going to be similar to before. So it's z minus one, sorry, Not another z, z minus one. So minus a half. Um, so ne le let's next choose what z naught and w naught. How, how are we going to work those out? Well, the usual thing is to use one of these relations. Um, the simplest seems to be to use what happens when z equals one. When z equals one, we want to get w equals zero. So that can happen if we make z naught equal to one. Then when z is 1, we've got integral from 1 to 1 is 0. And that means we can make w 0, 0 as well. So we'll do that. So we've used this one. And that just leaves us with w equals alpha times the integral from 1 to little z. And just simplify this. It's big z over square root of big z squared. Big Z. Um, we can do this integral. It's a very straightforward one. Um, 
it gives us z squared, or do the antiderivative. So it's uh, z alpha z squared. Um, if I differentiate that, I get half times 2z over this. So yeah. Um, and it's evaluated at little z and 1, which just gives us alpha times little z minus 1. So to determine alpha, uh, we use the thing we haven't used yet. I should mention, um, we, it looks like we haven't used this one either. Um, but we can always check that this works out. Um, notice that when z is minus 1, this will also give us zero. So, okay, in, a sec, in effect, we've used that, that one already. Um, and that leaves us with this one that we, we use to find out what alpha is. So just substituting in zero, we get IA is equal to alpha times the square root of minus one, which is I alpha. So therefore, alpha is equal to A. And our final answer is 